Welcome back to the show. Now to tech. Eris, powering your digital world. Joining us now with the latest consumer trends around the world is Dr. Billy Abraham of the Technology Marketing Department at Sapir Academic College. Hey, Billy, thanks so much for being here. Thank also you. with us is Nate Stonehill, our very own economy correspondent. We'll get to you in just a bit. But let's kick off with artificial intelligence. Experts are saying that uh, AI machines could replace us in 45 yeah. years. Yeah. What's going on there? Unfortunately, they're predicting a gloomy future. Look, we do have to say that artificial intelligence has made uh, significant contributions to society. It has. It's an integral part of um, uh, cell driving vehicles which are going to make a significant change. However, according to this study, um, in, there's a 50% chance that robots, uh, uh, robots actually, uh, based on artificial intelligence, will replace us in many different things. For example, uh, translations like today with Google Translate, mm -hmm. truck driving, high school essay writing, even writing best selling books. What? Yeah, and according to the White House Council of Economic Advisors, there's an 83% chance that all individuals earning less than $20 per hour are going to lose their jobs completely. completely. They'll be replaced by robots. It's meaning it's become irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, well, that's pretty depressing. It is very gloomy. Yeah. yeah. It means that the lower your, your uh, salary, the lower the skill that is required to do the job, and the greater the chance that you're going to lose it, unfortunately. Oh, no. That's too bad. Yeah. Uh, well, moving on, staying with artificial intelligence, uh, could facial recognition be the end to boarding passes? Uh, this is kind of creepy as well, and then it, it gives is. you that big brother feeling, doesn't it? Yeah. So JetBlue Airways and Delta Airlines are joining forces to test facial and fingerprint technologies, and this uh, the attention is actually to replace boarding passes, which is good because it means that companies will be able to save a lot of money printing out the boarding passes and you'll be able to save time. Uh, and uh, the other purposes is to increase security, meaning to eliminate misidentification, which could be trouble sometimes, ease passage through the airport, and also reduce friction points in the airport itself, meaning you can get through the different security checkpoints much quick, much more quickly. Mm -hmm. And this is how it works. There will be a camera that will take a photo. This photo will be transmitted to the the U.S. authorities. Uh, this will be compared to databases, and if you're identified, then the, the, on, on top of the camera, it will say that you can board the airplane, and you just board. Okay. Well, interesting. I mean, there is nothing worse than like digging through your bag for that ticket stub. You know, when, when exactly. you have just everything ready, and you're like, ugh, the boarding pass. So, so maybe it could uh, help to be more seamless. But, but we'll see. Uh, moving on now uh, to uh, Israeli tech. A solar panel tree uh, developed right here was planted in France. So, tell us about that. Okay. So, we're talking about uh, a technology that was developed by a, an Israeli startup. Uh, called Soul Logic. Mm -hmm. um, the first prototype was developed in 2014. Um, there are trees, there are 10 trees um, planted in different cities in Israel and, and the United States, and this past Monday in France. It's really amazing. Passes cool. by. Cool, I mean, it looks like a piece of art. Yeah, it is. It really looks futuristic, and, and uh, people can charge their phones with it, they can serve the internet. Um, they can just enjoy the shade on a very hot summer day. Mm -hmm. uh, it also supplies water and street lighting. And some of its benefits, first of all, it will decrease CO2 emissions because we're using uh, sustainable sources of energy uh, and increase access to public Wi-Fi, which I think could be problematic at times. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It it's is. It's a really neat initiative. Much. I wonder yeah. uh, where else we'll be seeing it soon. I'm Hopefully here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is planted in several places, okay. usually, but I really don't know where. Yeah, well, we need to go find those trees then, don't we? <laughs> uh, and, and stay with Israel, um, finally, Netflix is coming to a new Israeli TV service. Just break this down because there is Netflix in Israel. Yeah. So until now, you, you, you can subscribe via uh, online. Uh, you can subscribe online, but not through any provider. Um, first of all, a little bit about the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, very little competition, uh, but, the, but the industry is very large. It's a $5 billion market, $5 billion shekel market. Um, but there are two major competitors, Hot and Yes, and there's a smaller one, Cellcom TV, which okay. only grabbed 10% of, of, of the market in the past two years. Um, and according to government sources, uh, Israeli consumers saved about 100 shekels a year, which is, isn't that much because they've been able to save 300 million shekels overall because of greater competition. But if there's more competition, we'll be able to save 2 billion shekels, mm -hmm. which adds up to 1,000 shekels per subscriber or family which is a significant portion. Yeah. So I think both sides will benefit because um, Netflix hasn't been able to gain a, a very big foothold in the market and able to do it through partner TV. Well, Billy, thanks so much for this today. Pleasure. And staying with Tech Dubai Police.